6 Valuable Pieces of Unusual Dating Advice for Men Dating isn't a big deal. It means that two people get together to have fun and see how well they get along. All done. It shouldn't be that hard. I'll tell you the truth. At first, I had no idea what was going on with dating. I sat by my phone for hours, waiting for a message that never came. I didn't know why. I was lucky sometimes, and a girl would come back to my room, but I never knew why. Most guys don't know much about dating if you ask them. And it can be annoying. You like girls who aren't right for you, but you tell yourself that they are. Then you find yourself in a pile of broken pieces and ashes of what you thought was a lasting connection. You get stuck in the friend zone and don't know how to get out while watching her date jerk after jerk. But all you can do is pick up the pieces and be a shoulder to cry on, which is very frustrating. You get a bunch of dating apps, but then you learn that Tinder texts aren't as good as talking to someone in person. Even though the dates are new and exciting, they also make people hollow and empty. You spend a lot of money on drinks, new clothes, haircuts, cleaning products, and maybe even a how to find a girlfriend in 30 days course, but nothing seems to help. You read pickup sites and articles, and then you learn that canned routines, icebreakers, and negs can't replace personality, character, and connection. I get it. I don't blame you. I've also been there. But why is it so hard for most guys to date? Because culture gives a very skewed idea of what dating should be like. As soon as I realized that my dating life changed for the better. My dates happened more often and were better. I finally stopped trying to get a girl and just had fun. I was just being myself, and the girls liked that. Men's health relationship tips couldn't have helped me meet as many girls as they did. I found an amazing girlfriend who fits my unique nature perfectly. And I realized that the best dating advice is the opposite of what you might think. Number 1. You don't have problems with dating, you have problems with your life. When I was younger, I often ended up in the friend zone. People would say that I was a nice guy. I did everything I could for a woman. I listened to her rant about her jerk of an ex-boyfriend, got her food when she was hungry, and talked to her on the phone late into the night. Then she said, I like having you as a friend. I did what any man would do, I tried to get out of the friend zone. After a few searches on Google, I realized I was too needy. So, I made too many changes. I didn't answer texts right away, didn't pay for dates, and claimed I wasn't as available so I wouldn't seem so desperate. If you want to call it that, it worked. I got more attention from women, but it wasn't because of who I was. They liked me because I was mysterious and sometimes acted like a jerk, but they would all run away when they found out who I was. Your love life and relationships show who you are, with all your good qualities and bad ones. Someone else gets to look at your life, your attitude, and who you are. And when you get to know someone well, your true self will always come out. You can act like someone you're not, talk about things you wouldn't normally talk about, or dress like a magazine model. This will work, but just for a little while. In the end, you will show who you are. By focusing on your dates instead of your life, you are fixing symptoms instead of problems. Sort out your problems, take the next step in your life, and become the best form of who you are. It will be clear. Don't pretend to like something just to make yourself seem more interesting. Find something you're interested in instead, no matter what it is. Be true to yourself and own it. Don't wait to answer messages on purpose so that you look less needy and accessible. Instead, live a full and interesting life, and you'll find yourself texting less. Don't spend all your money on trying to impress your date. Instead, be sure of yourself and your life so you don't have to rely on money. Before you date, you should get your own life in order and be happy on your own. Deal with your problems and past breakups. Develop self-control and you'll reach your goals. Make your dream life come true, become the best form of who you are, and do it honestly. Once you've made a good life for yourself, dating will go well. Number 2 Set up the first meeting basic. Most dating advice says that you should try hard on the first date. You want to act as well as you can. You want to impress her with your new haircut and the great Italian restaurant, 4.8 out of 5 stars on TripAdvisor. You want to be the perfect gentleman, so you should pay for your drinks and have something else planned in case you get bored at the bar. Nothing should be missing. Why wouldn't you? Don't first views matter? So, yes. And that's exactly why the first date should be simple. I've also been there. I couldn't figure out what to do before my first date. I spent hours reading reviews of ice cream shops and making a list of things to talk about if the conversation died down. I'll share something with you. The simplest dates were the ones I liked best. A stroll through the grass. Some tea at a cafe. 
a beer from the store sitting on a park bench. Why? Because the goal of a first date isn't to impress the person you're with. Your goal is to get to know them and decide if it's worth your time to get to know them. You want to know if the two of you are compatible, not if she falls for your mask. You'll also be less worried and less involved because if things don't work out, you only lost two hours of your time and not $150 at a restaurant. Sitting on a bench and talking won't get boring if you're a good match. If you have trouble having deep chats, go to a bar or take a walk around town. There will be people and other things to talk about. Change your way of thinking. What you were taught to believe is wrong. On a first date, you want to get to know the girl, not try to impress her by putting on a mask. Find out if you like each other, and if not, it's not a big deal. What if she thinks I'm cheap, though? Let me put it this way, would you want a woman who thinks you're cheap because you don't spend $100 on someone you don't know? It's a great way to weed out people who just want to get rich quickly. Also, the fact that you don't spend much money up front shows her that you're not hungry and are strong enough that you don't have to show off. Women find the confidence to be very attractive. Number 3, Most Beautiful Women Want a Normal Guy Even though I'm a little bit biased, I think my girlfriend is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. She's not the only super hot woman I've ever met, but they all tell the same story. And to be honest, I don't understand it every time I hear it. Normal guys rarely talk to hot women because they don't have the guts or think she's too good for them. The guys who talk to them are either too drunk at the club or just creeps who don't know how to act around other people. Most guys think that hot women have a lot of men coming to them. This is funny and almost funny. Sure, they all have a lot of fans on social media, but how many of them talk to them in real life? Men care more about how they look than women do. You'll pass the first check if you clean up, work out for a while, get rid of that belly, and don't dress like a hermit. Here's the funny part, being honest and being your true, real self can get you a lot of points. She gets a lot of guys trying to impress her or just flat out lying to her to get in her pants, so it's nice to see someone real for a change. When you first talk to her, she will probably have what pickup artists call bitch shields. This means she will act distant, cold, or uninterested to scare off the creeps and jerks who try to get into her pants every day. Show her that you're not like them and that you're a real man who wants to talk to her for a while and find out what she's like. It doesn't mean she'll fall in love with you, but you wouldn't believe how many beautiful women want to meet a normal, real guy for a change. Talk to women you think are too hot to approach or out of your league like you would with anyone else. A lot of them want to date a nice, normal guy, but only creeps and jerks talk to them. Even if nothing comes of it, talking to a beautiful woman gives you a huge confidence boost. Number 4 Be real and put yourself out there. I've talked about this before, but I want to bring it up again because it's so important to any relationship that works and makes you happy. I spent some time with pickup artists and their online boards. This is a group whose goal is to seduce women and have sexual success with them. Any man would like to meet and sleep with a lot of women, so I tried a lot of techniques, tips, pickup lines, and anything else that might help. To be honest, there is a lot of great stuff out there that works, if working means getting to know a lot of women or seducing them. Most of it, though, is about how you look, how you talk, and how your standing is seen by others. These are shallow, and even though you'll probably hook up with more women, they probably won't be the ones you want to be with. Be yourself if you want to find a woman who is a good match for you and likes you for who you are. And if you want to be real, you have to know what you want and be open to being hurt. Know what you want, what you need, and what your goals are, and don't be afraid to talk about them. Own it if you want casual sex. If you want a real relationship, you need to own it. And if you've been hurt in the past and have trouble trusting people because of it, own it. Don't give out too much information, but know what you want, stick to it, and be real when the time is right. But what if she leaves because she doesn't like me? Dude, that's the point. Being real and open means putting yourself out there without knowing what will happen. It's to show who you are and find people who want to get to know you, not to be someone else. This dam is not only strong, confident, and hot, but it's also important if you want to find the person you want to be with. Here's one more thing you can do to get better at being vulnerable. The day after you had sex, text her. Yes, you make yourself exposed by being the first person to text her, but she will love you for it. Honestly, it's the right thing to do. Women put a lot of money into having sex with a guy. Once that happens, the connection changes and she is, for lack of a better word, in your control. Text her afterward, and she'll feel better about having slept with you and think more of you. Number 5, Learn to love being turned down. There is a good reason for rejection, it keeps people who aren't good for each other from getting together. Mark Manson. 
When you put yourself out there and show who you are, you will get turned down a lot. Some people will always dislike you if you stand up for something. Here is where most guys get off track. I've been turned down so many times that I can't even keep track. Sometimes when the person is getting close, and sometimes after a few dates. It's good to be told no. It hurts at the time, but it helps you find people who are a good fit for you in the long run. It's like a big filter that keeps out people who don't match your attitude, your ideals, or what you want. Not getting what you want doesn't make you a bad person. It just means you're not a good match. I know it's painful. I know how it feels when a woman tells you that you're strange. I know how it feels to wait for her after she said she was going to the bathroom and would be right back, only to never see her again. But the pain is nothing compared to how you feel when you find someone who shares your values, hopes, dreams, quirks, sense of humor, and ways of living. It's amazing. I don't believe in soulmates, but if you want to find yours or even get close to one, you should be ready to get turned down a lot. It's part of the game to be turned down. It is an important filter. You have to be turned down by a lot of people before you can find the ones who are right for you. No matter how many times someone says no, it doesn't matter. The important thing is to keep going. You have to get used to being turned down and learn to be independent of the results. Number 6, Don't just hit her because you can. I know this is a first world problem, but when I started to follow my advice, my dating life got a lot better. I could sleep with more women than I wanted to. And if you've been thirsty for years, once the tap starts running again, you drink like a camel. I slept with all of them, even if I wasn't interested or didn't think she was that pretty. I get it. It's thrilling and exciting, makes you feel like a guy, makes sex fun, and gives you a new story or memory to tell or remember. But a lot of casual sex makes you feel empty and leaves a hole that you can't fill. The sex often feels like playing with someone else's body, and if you didn't want her in the first place, you feel dirty and shabby afterward. You might also go through this at some point. That's good, you're getting better. Have fun, take advantage of it while you can, and beat your heads in if you want to. If you do it right, you'll get to a point where you're glad you didn't sleep with a woman even though you could have. It will change the way you think about dating for the rest of your life, and every man should do it at least once. You don't have to sleep with every girl you can. Sometimes it's better not to sleep with her, even though you know you could.